house in May, um, specifically green spaces. Obviously, public space is going to include um, even rights of way, um, which is getting really, really in depth for such a large area. So, just an overview. I'm going to go over my objective, precedence, um, authorization along this, the way, methodology, and then design alternatives for proposed um, new open spaces or public spaces. So the objective comprehensive open space network that will strengthen Boston Way um, as a trail and light rail corridor. And um, the trail itself examines a variety of open spaces and the networks that um, create the overall communities along Boston Way and um, to strengthen them by connecting them with open space versus just having people walk along the sidewalks. It's the overall goal. So why greenways, I won't go into um, detail in this really, but um, this just kind of explains as to why um, we need more open space and um, greenway in general, but also um, you know parks and plazas and just um, connection points, because you can have two parks, but if you don't have a connection point, then you have uh, less use of both. Um, categorization, these go over basic characteristics of public spaces and then from these characteristics. That's how I developed a matrix um, categorizing all public spaces. This again is just uh, another graphic going into the identity, place, people, and use of public space to define um, how you use each space differently. Um, so this is the case study that I really went off of, the Twin Cities Regional Component Categories for Public Spaces. They, um, their aspects are the overall component use, the service area, the size, site attributes, and site location. Um, and then I kind of had to Okay, so Cincinnati um, total um, parks and recreation land use area is about 15%, and vacant parcels within the whole city is about 7%. And that's taken from plan Cincinnati, so that could have changed since then. Um, but those were just getting some basic numbers for me. And I do realize that Wasson Way is only kind of half in the city bounds, and then half so I kind of address that a little bit later. And then the top chart up there kind of shows where Cincinnati ranks in terms of um, total expenditure per resident in terms of open space. So I was kind of surprised to, be, uh, to see that we do have more parks and recreation space than I originally thought. Um, so, so according to that chart, we're like fifth in the United States? No, it's not every city. Oh, I that see. chart actually is for Philadelphia, so they showed, you know, I guess comparable cities. Um, but they also could have taken out cities they didn't want to include and so on and so forth. So it could be kind of skewed. Right. And then Hamilton County, this is taken from um, the Hamilton County Existing Land Use Analysis. Um, so it has every, it has Cincinnati and then all the rest of the communities that Wasson Way goes through. Um, and none of them are the highest one, which I don't really remember where that is, but um, they all kind of range. So these are my case studies. The Bloomingdale Trail, which is part of the greater 606 um, trail, or I guess Greenway in Chicago. They have about a train to stop every fourth of a mile, I believe. And it's a multi-use bike trail and pedestrian trail. Um, so it's an alternative transportation corridor, which is kind of what I was uh, Indianapolis Trail, um, it goes through Indianapolis and into the suburbs now, officially, and um, it's about 10.4 um, miles long, so about 10.5 miles. Um, this is what I really got the inspiration from, the Emerald Necklace, or the um, Boston connection of their park system. Obviously, this is a much larger scale than Wasson Way, but um, building on Wasson Way, Cincinnati, and the greater region can develop a larger park system. And then the Jacksonville S line, which is not completed yet, but they're kind of in the process. Um, it goes through it, it goes through community central business districts as well as neighborhoods. Um, so it definitely takes into account the half mile radius in terms of pulling people out of their neighborhoods and onto the trail to get to other places versus using it off of it. Um, so these are my final precedents that I chose. I have um, you know, the Emerald Networks in Boston, the High Line in New York City, um, the bottom right picture, 
bottom right picture is in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and it's um, a park connecting one um, pathway, one main pathway to another, and it's for pedestrians. It doesn't focus on cars. Um, the top is the urban waterfront greenway, and so that's just a section that I think kind of represents what could be represented in or along Lawson Way. And then the top um, right picture is from the Minneapolis St. Paul Regional Trail Connection. So again, much larger area, but taking from that, we can apply it in a small So this is the matrix I developed. Um, I have six categories, seven categories. Um, it starts with the smallest at the top, which is just small green spaces. This could be anything from public rights away to medians to um, you know preserved open space, just like along highways or uh, main roads. And it can also include gateways, so gateways to different neighborhoods or the Wasson Way Trail. Um, next, I have pocket parks, which includes like squares, plazas, um, cultural sites. So this doesn't necessarily have to be a green space. It could be like paved. Within a central business district or a commercial district. And then I do list amenities on the side all the way down, and those are just in general um, what you're going to see in that category. So the next would be Neighborhood Park, which is about an acre, give or take some. And then followed by Community Park region and Regional Park. So Neighborhood would be in between Pocket Park and Community Park. It's going to cater to a specific neighborhood and not necessarily um, within walking distance always, but um, definitely more within walking distance than community parks, which is going to cater to one or two communities max. And um, the, the cutoff for driving to me, I guess, is a community park. So you would drive to a community park to play sports or to visit because it has some amenity that you can't get in your community. And then a regional park is the same way. You know, it's going to address the whole region. So there doesn't need to necessarily be one in each community. Nature reserve is kind of the same thing. You know, it's um, preserved. It's definitely not landscaped or anything like that. Um, but there doesn't have to be a nature reserve in every community. It can be more regional. And then, of course, they have a greenway on there, which is basically Wasson Way, what Wasson Way wants to be. So these just go over in detail over it again um, and then I have some pictures each slide has pictures from the actual along the Boston way that's already there um, so these are all current things some of them um, represent other communities not along Boston way and I'll point this out as I go along so these are um, ideas from like green space that's already there so we have an Evanston um, gateway we have the Marymount gateway this is um, Xavier and then this is a, I want to say this one, some triangle park. I'm not super familiar with it, but it's. Uh, it's corner of the river, it's probably the past. I don't know how to necessarily get yeah. it. And then yeah. in terms of pocket parks, um, these are also including plazas. So Marymount has quite a few. It's bottom two pictures, and then the top is um, high park square. And neighborhood parks. Um, this is an overview of, I believe, Fairfax Elementary, so just north of the trail. This is Cycler <laughs> Park, and then this one's Dogwood or Dover in Marymount. Um, community parks, again, these are going to be a little bit bigger, they could be more natural as well. This is the observatory site, um, and then these three, this one is Miami Bluffs, I believe is what it's called, which is over. Yeah. And then regional, this can this is where it kind of steps up. It, it can be more large scale recreational. So this is the Little Miami Golf Course, Alt Park, Alt Park, and then this is um, some soccer fields located located north of Marymount. I believe it's in Fairfax. And then nature reserves, the Batman Preserve is in um, or along the trail within a fourth of a mile, so these are both taken from that. And then Greenways, these few are from Lawson Bay, and this is an example of from Jacksonville, the yes, line. So overviewing how I kind of went into the categorization process, um, I definitely looked at the plan light rail stops, 
and um, as well as more that somebody has um, proposed. And then the yellow is what I'm representing as um, soft entrances or like soft gateways. So like you have a connection of Little Miami and Lawson Way. So I'm proposing that that's turned into some type of gateway. Um, and then you know maybe in Alt Park you don't necessarily have a huge entrance with parking and everything else, but you have some sort of entrance from the trail to the park and vice versa. And then I of course have yellow um, circles on each of the transit, you know the main transit hubs because I mean obviously those are going to have some type of those green skin green space in them. And like everyone has um, shown, I believe everyone I talked to on the TOD side has some type of green space or pocket park. There are a few people that have community parks and then I think there's one person that had some sort of preserved nature area and um, some type of other cross. That was actually Spencer that has the cross with the duck green that could be turned into um, more potential green space. And then again, the orange just represents office space or employment hubs, employment centers, which can be attributed to people needing more green space as a break from the day or if they're walking to work, anything like that. And then schools are also placed on here, um, as well as the, um, not employment centers, but uh, central business districts. So again, just kind of looking at where everything is placed, you can definitely see that since Cincinnati ends, I want to say right about here, this is all, um, it doesn't have as many larger parks, whereas you get an individual Indies, and there's quite a few, the Country Club, Ball Park, Fairmont Gardens, Golf Course. Um, this is private open space, so I don't really understand that quite, um, if it's not open to the public, but uh, it's there. And then from this is what I gathered that there needs to be necessarily a few more connection points, not necessarily more pocket parks or community parks, but um, it's kind of small in here. These green lines are representing um, entrances from Lawson Way or from a transit center that could potentially have green space to the community and or the community surrounding it. So for instance, this one goes from the Evanston Central Business District to different schools. And then this one would be going from this transit hub to Oakley, the Central Business District, which has two schools in it. So again, these green lines are representing not individual greenways or anything like that, but more just like landscape streets or landscape streetscapes. So that works. Um, because that'll make the community more walkable, getting away from the automobile, which I believe we're going towards as a society. And um, yeah, the, da the dash lines represent not concrete ways to get there, but um, like if they go through a park or a central business district, I'm not necessarily saying this is the only way. Just saying those are the areas of focus um, to further develop ways of getting from point A to most of it. And then this is just the basic, excuse me, employment center and um, overall map that we were going to be given at the beginning. So these kind of, you overlay them and kind of just took out the main points I thought um, should be used in the methodology to create where spaces should go. And then, I don't know if this is really legible from here, I don't know if the image quality is good, but this shows the vacant spaces. So you can see, again, this is where Spencer's project was. There's a lot of vacant, um, I believe it's mainly industrial use land, but it's there. Um, and so these are kind of ways you can see where there would be more pocket parks or um, green spaces implemented over here, because there's obviously more room for them. And this side lacks the, the smaller green spaces that this side is kind of connected by. And then this is just an overall parcel map, which again is two words. And then this is showing the same thing as the first one, central business districts or employment centers and schools. And then in terms of design and precedence, um, I do have a few that I like sketched myself, but I do have these three to show as ideas for smaller pocket parks or green spaces to implement. This is the Minneapolis Transit Hub that's proposed, um, and it has green space all around it. So again, you know, if you're just imagining that this is our transit hub, and then there's a green space, and the trail goes right through there, kind of works out in the same setting that we have. This is a proposed Rio crosswalk um, that links to a bus transit center. So again, I'm proposing quite a few crosswalks 
um, because I feel that connecting from Boston Way or Boston Way to another Greenway or just to a park, um, having more landscape spaces makes the commute or the connection um, more viable, I guess. And then this is a plaza adjacent to a transit hub in Virginia. I thought it looked pretty cool. And then these are my design alternatives. Um, again, they're, they're pretty shreddish or just a vignette because they're not concrete. Um, but I do just have you know, a park or greenway space that goes you know, through a set of buildings or a set of like a central business district um, area. And then this one would be more of a plaza in front of a larger retail um, establishment that could have maybe the transit hub on the other side. And this is going where you get to the end of Wasson Way and you're more in um, a heavily forested area. So again, this is an example of maybe bringing art or some type of sculpture into the area so you get um, more to establish more of a place. And then these are my other two. This is a proposed crosswalk. And um, like that would just continue the trail across a major road. And then this would just be a pocket park within a neighborhood. So a, um, like a playground or something like that. And then for further development, again, because I don't have necessarily a whole um, lot of design work, this is in San Francisco. What they've done, they've proposed connections from park to park, and um, greenways are included in this. So you can kind of see how many they have for the entire city, and that's kind of what I'm envisioning for um, Cincinnati. And then on top of that, I mean, everyone else here has proposed green space designs or um, pocket parks, community parks, whatever. So um, when those, I guess, are finished, it'll be more time to create 